This video is going to cover creating an Electron app for our chat room application. Now, if you're interested in creating an Electron app for any Rails application, really, this will be applicable. We're just using the chat room app as the example, but really all you need is to just have a Rails server running and you'll be good to go. I'll also cover how to create an installer uh, and to connect it to like a production server. So you are going to want to have a production server if you're trying to connect to a production server, obviously. Uh, but okay, let's go ahead and let's get started because this is actually pretty quick. So we're just going to go ahead and type npm init. And then it's going to ask us for a package name. It's defaulting to episode 13 because that's the name of my folder. But I'm going to call this Turbo Chat. So I'm just going to type in Turbo Chat. Uh, and it's going to be upset about capital letters. So instead, I'm just going to do a lowercase Turbo Chat. We'll give it a version of 1.0.1, .1, just so it's different. We'll just say it's a chat room app, uh, an entry point. I'm going to change it to main.js. Test command, we're not testing. What do we look like, actual developers? Absolutely not. I don't have a GitHub repo yet, so I'm just going to hit enter. Keywords, none. Author, I'll put in my name, or I'll put in my username, I guess. License, don't have one. It's about to write. Sure, sounds good, and we're good to go. So now that we've done that, we have a package.json. The other thing we need is to right click and just create a main.js file. At this point, you have all the files you need. Basically, the package.json is going to have a couple commands. The main.js is going to create the Electron app. Let's go ahead and let's start with the Electron app so that you can see what we're running before we try to run it. We're going to start by importing a browser window, and I'm going to full screen this and bump up the font size so that you can actually see what we're doing. We need to import both the app and the browser window, and we're going to start by calling create window. I'm then going to close this so that I don't forget to do this later because I forgot to do it during the demo. We're then going to create a comment. It just says create the browser, browser window. And then we're going to create a new browser window and give it a default size. So again, these are the default width and height. So we'll just add width default uh, size. I guess we'll leave it like that. Next, we'll come down here and we need to do a try catch block. So we're going to do a, uh, let's just say a const development URL equals, and we'll set this equal to HTTP localhost port 3000. We'll then also create a const for the production URL, which we'll set equal to, and in my case, I'll set it equal to one that I have over here, which is just my Heroku app. Now, we're not going to be doing any checks for which environment we're in. It's trying to do that, but we're not going to uh, add in those yet. So what we'll do is we'll just say win.load URL equals development URL, and we'll just do this for testing. If we get an error, we'll catch it, and then we'll just go ahead and uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll console.log or even console.error the error. Okay. That's it for creating the browser window. We now need to actually start the application. Create a comment that just says, uh, start the application. And then we'll create a function that just says app.when ready. It's going to call a function called create window. We can then create one more comment. This is going to be for our quit button. Now, this one is a little bit interesting because you're going to see a very questionable if statement, but I will explain. So it's going to be app.on when all closed. And you can even see here GitHub Copilot knows what I'm after. We're going to check if the process.platform does not equal Darwin. This is Mac OS right here. So Darwin is going to be your Mac OS uh, environment. So we're actually going to come up here and we can just create a const, call it Mac OS equal to Darwin. Grab this and we'll just put this in here. And we're just checking if we're not in Mac OS, then when we click the exit button, we want to quit the application. Now, why does this look weird? Well, it looks like we're basically saying we don't support Mac, but, and I'm willing to bet GitHub Copilot will also guess this as the comment on Mac OS, it is common for applications and their menu bar to stay active until the user explicitly quits with command plus Q or by clicking the quit menu item. So yeah, it's a little bit weird, but basically you click the quit button and it doesn't actually quit. 
you have to go click the quit menu item because of how it works. So I think it's like a way to keep it in memory. So if you click it again, it'll open quicker than if you'd completely shut it down. So again, this isn't saying you don't support Mac. You could easily build an installer for Mac, although here I'm only gonna be building one for Windows. Uh, you just don't quit for some reason. We're gonna come over to package.json and go back to being Windows developers who have other problems to deal with. So we can't really judge too much. We're gonna add a comma here and we're gonna have to create a start command where we start electron, which we can just do by typing electron dot. At this point, we need to actually add electron as a dependency. So I'll come over here and I'll just type npm i electron space, and I'm gonna full screen this, hyphen d. Because we don't wanna add this into a main package. This is just a developer only dependency. Okay, let's go ahead and run a npm run start, I think is what I called it. It is what I called it. It'll go ahead and open up the application. Again, I have a Rails server running over here, so don't think this is coming from nowhere. It's coming from my local host. I'll just log into dean at example.com with a password of password. So here you can see we're logged in. I can say test and I can send myself a picture, LOL. And it'll go to my active storage stuff, which I have set up on my server. So you can see that's working. Okay, so that's neat. We can run it in development, but really what does that get us? Well, it gets us a different test environment. So that's nice but we want to build this for production. So well, what do we need to do? Well, we need to add another dependency. So we're gonna type npm i, and we're going to add electron dash builder. We're gonna again do hyphen d at the end of it uh, because it is a developer dependency. You won't need to build your application in production unless you have a very unique use case, in which case, I'm sorry to hear that because it probably sounds like pain. All right, so we have that. Uh, it's gonna give you an error here. You can run audit fix if you really want to, to make sure you don't have any high security vulnerabilities. And it tells us we couldn't fix it. We needed to do a manual review, whatever. Not the point of the tutorial. The point is we now need to add in the uh, proper build portion here. So what we do for electron build is we create a app colon dist command which is going to run electron builder. And then after we run the uh, command, we need to have a post install. And this is done so that electron builder can run electron dash builder space install app dependencies, which is just a way to, to ensure you have the app dependencies you need. Now I'm gonna grab the license and the author here, move it up to the top. And right here, we're going to add in a build block. We'll say build, colon, braces, comma at the end. And in here, we need to add in an app ID, which I'll set equal to com.dnn.turbochat. I've never typed that before, so GitHub Copilot's just doing that for me. Product name, which it's trying to set to turbochat, but I don't actually know if that's a valid command. But we'll just move past it and pretend like we know what we're doing. The main thing here is we need a Windows block. This Windows block needs to have a target block. This target block is going to be an array. And inside of this array, we have another target for NSIS. Now we have the arch set to x64, which makes sense. I'm on an x64 system. Now we're gonna come down one off of the target here or off of this brace for the window. And after we get out of windows, we'll then do quotes, NSIS, colon, braces, and we'll do a comma here. So for this NSIS, we want to do a one click equal to false. We want to do a per machine set to true. And just to see something interesting, we'll add a allow to change installation directory set to true. At this point, our package.json is done. Now all we have to do is run this command. And even if you're not religious, you'll probably wanna pray that this works. So we'll go ahead and run a npm run app colon dist. Okay, so we've now gone ahead and created the app. We have this dist folder here with a win unpacked. You can open up the win unpacked and it has an executable right here. 
So this is just going to allow us to connect to whatever, but this is still our demo application. I'll show you how to connect it to the production server in a second here. You also have this installer. This you can basically just grab and throw anywhere in your uh, computer or send it to a customer and they'll be able to install it. I don't want to install it yet. I actually want to install the production version. So let's say you're ready to produce this. Just go ahead and grab the production URL, pop it in here, save, and then go ahead and run your NPM run app dist again. It's that easy to change between the two. And if you add like a .env, you can even grab it from the process environment if you want to. Okay, we now have it. So let's go ahead and let's open up the dist. We'll grab the installer here. I'll grab this, I'll pop up to a different folder just so you know I'm not cheating. And then I'll take this and I'll check to make sure it's not installed yet. Doesn't look like it is. I'll go ahead and I'll install this. I'll double click it. It'll ask me where I want to install it to. C program files, turbo chat seems fine to me. So I'll click install. And now it's asking me if I want to run turbo chat. I'll go ahead and click finish. You can see here it installed it with a version 1.0.1. .1. I realize that's font for ants, but just trust me, that's what it says. And here I'm actually connected to my production instance. So I'll say Dean, or I'll type in my actual email and password. So I'm not going to read this one out loud. I'll click start chatting and we should see all of the people that have signed up for the demo app for this tutorial series. I'll come over to a message from myself and I'll just send myself, I don't know, something. Uh, last time I did the audio, this time I'll send myself a video. Okay, I've gone ahead and sent myself that. It's very loud, but that clearly worked. And that just about does it for the tutorial. So that allows you to package up an application. Now, if you want to learn more, I'll have a link to uh, two things in the video description. One is the, a link to the Electron build configuration for NSIS, which I can move over here, which has a whole bunch of options that you can set. Uh, one click per machine, it explains what they do, how to set the installer icons. Uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff that you might need, including like a EULA. The other one is a link to the Electron Build project or the Electron Builder project where they even have a quick start guide if you want to use that and follow it. They're both very helpful resources. But now that we're done with this tutorial, let's go ahead and let's make sure we can uninstall the application. And while the application's uninstalling, if you're interested in creating a React project that you can package into a uh, application like this at some point, I have a tutorial that covers creating a Rails backend with a React front end that allows you to log in and log out because that's usually the hardest part of those API setups with Rails. I have a link to that video on the screen right now.